Welcome back to the David Pakman Show. Welcome back to the show. Special membership offer happening right now in honor of Lewis's band Krakatoa winning the Metal Olympics. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, don't don't get too wrapped up in it. Uh, DavidPakman.com slash Krakatoa. You'll get the commercial free podcast, the bonus shows, access to our archive that dates back to August of 2005. I don't remember the date offhand, but I think it's August 17th was the first show. Don't know. Yeah, no, I, I certainly wasn't asking, but uh, I just, I don't know either. You know, I guess we're both in the same boat there. Have you heard, Lewis, about this bill sponsored by Senator John McCain? He was, he was uh, in a way, kind of almost the president. Uh, 3081 is the number of this proposal. It's the Enemy Belligerent Interrogation, Detention, and Prosecution Act. This is a concern both for individuals, I hope, on the left and on the right. It would authorize the federal government to detain American citizens indefinitely without a trial, without even charging them with anything, without even reading them their Miranda rights. Okay. Homeland Security Secretary has classified veterans, retired law enforcement, Ron Paul supporters, uh, conservatives as terrorists that we know. So we know that the skills and the discernment that exists on behalf of the government, uh, to, to figure out exactly who is a risk are not always that great. That right. I think we know. We also know that when it comes to, for example, the no fly list, Ted Kennedy was on the, the no fly list for a while. So we know that with that assessment of people, we were kind of off also in many cases, the bill is just going to open up the door not only to that, but to, to the violation of what, what many others are saying are a number of constitutional amendments. Uh, the bill would provide for interrogation and detention of en enemy belligerents, is the term that's being used, who commit hostile acts against the U.S. And the idea, I guess, is that the government wants to start, wants to continue, wants to expand, use whatever word you want, being able to just pick anybody up, whether or not you have real evidence against them, whether or not you just have hearsay, hold them indefinitely without even accusing them of a crime and interrogate them. This is essentially the goal of this bill. It's like uh, the Patriot Act on steroids. In a sense, it is. Yeah. And this is opposed by the Campaign for Liberty, the Cato Institute, Amnesty International, Arkansas Libertarian Party. We're seeing opposition to this from all sides. So you should think, Lou, as well, if, if there is broad based opposition and people from all sides of the political spectrum who don't like this, certainly it won't pass. Right. Because the will of the people is represented in our political system. I'd hope so. But as we know, that's often not the case. And it's appalling to me that two so-called patriotic men. I mean, who even who, who even knows at this point whether the patriotic people are the McCain's or, or not, but John McCain and John Thune. McCain spent five years in a North Vietnamese POW camp. John Thune professed to have heartland values. How could they put forth such an intellectually dishonest, poorly defined as many of these bills are, ill thought out, and according to many legal experts, blatantly unconstitutional law. There is no definition about what material support means. What does it mean to provide material support to a terrorist organization? Well, I don't think you should be surprised. I don't think you should be surprised either, Lewis, that it's not clearly defined. That's how these laws are used to the advantage of those who don't want clear definition. They want a, a free reign to basically do whatever they want. Right. Any U.S. citizen who's a war protester and publicly exhibits an anti-government sentiment could actually fall under the category here where you could just be held indefinitely without being charged for anything. And you know, if you watch this show or listen to this show at all, and you know too, Lewis, sometimes you pay attention. I think you'll be able to attest to this. I dislike Nazi comparisons. Any comparison from either side, about either side, to being a Nazi, I don't like. But, but I think you're going to make one now. But I am going to make one, and it's not a comparison to Nazis in the abstract, but the consequences of S-3081 are reminiscent of Nazi Germany's discriminatory decrees, which were enacted on the last day of February in 1933, in terms of the latitude and the effect that they would have. And that's a Nazi comparison I'm comfortable making. I'll back that up. 